I'm in Beaufort, South Carolina in a downtown tropical paradise. I'm speaking with Linda Peters and we are in her five acre garden which she and nature have made. Linda, thank you for letting us come. You grew up a farmer's daughter, I believe. I did and I loved every second of it. But it wasn't a place where you grew tropicals. No, it was a dairy farm. We had a hundred acre dairy farm and we milked the cows and corn and wheat and that sort of thing. Um, you came to Beaufort and you were educated as a Montessori teacher. And so I think this garden and property served two purposes. It was your home, your school, and your creation. Home, school, and what I love to do. <laughs> what age children did you have? Three to six year olds. And how many did you have? 20 every year. Well, and we start right here where we are with something that's very child sized and lots of people use them, but, um, and I think it's like a little fairy land. It's, it's our little fairy garden, yes. The, the, the wagon um, my husband found, it's an antique wagon. When he brought it home, um, he said, do something with it. I said, oh, that would make a great little fairy garden. So he, we fixed it and put this little soil in and the moss and the stuff and added the little fairies, of course, and the little miniature turtles and, and lizards and things. And then we made a beautiful fairy garden. And for, for mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers, um, what, how does that help children develop their minds in a non-traditional teaching and looking at a book way? Well, we have a lot of vocabulary in there, a lot of um, colors and, and different creatures and moss and we get mushrooms in there and they love to walk around because there's different things on every side and for them it's like the perfect vantage point for them because they can just look in and it's right there at their eye level and it's, it, was, it was wonderful for I'm, them. I'm sure it was. As we move back into the woods, what's one of the first fun little areas that we encounter? Um, well, we have the first maybe fun area is the um, uh, the prehistoric lane uh -huh. where we I have a lot of dinosaurs hidden and we have tropical like plants and I have a, a dinosaur egg that I made out of concrete and um, and then we have a pterodactyl that flies in the sky and um, the, the mother dinosaur she's a topiary <laughs> with, with a big red bow and the um, the children love that might be their favorite favorite area just because they love dinosaurs. Children love dinosaurs so, yes. and of course there um, again, a teaching spot because some, you know, which dinosaurs are meat eaters and what, what about their body allows them to do that. And how can you tell this is a prey animal? Yes, so, and all the names. Like, they love the names yeah, of the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, which is wonderful in so many mm -hmm. ways to learn to pronounce things. Oh, I mean, that yes. just trains your tongue mm -hmm. and helps your memory as yes, well. Yes, it does. Yes, so we survived getting through the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we move on to another section uh -huh. of the garden. Um, we passed through the orchids and then we went to the fish pond, a koi pond, which um, is pretty large and I have some really large koi in there. And you said that it's fun because y'all will have different um, topics to study and so we walk back there and here are these enormous fish and you feed them probably more than you feed yourself and your husband. Uh, my <laughs> husband would say they definitely get fed more than he does. <laughs> Anyhow, yes we do, and um, we do steady fish, and so we go out and um, actually one day, it was summertime, we had summer school, and I said, okay children, take off your shoes, and they said, uh-oh, so they did, and then I let them all sit on the edge and put their feet oh. in the water. One little girl looked at me and said, this is the best day of my life. Oh, how <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. It was, it was wonderful. As we move on out, what's the next area that the children are going to be fascinated by? I've been fascinated by every place you took me today. Uh huh. Um, after the pond, we went by the peacocks and the chickens. The children always love to see the animals. They love the animals. And you've got chickens sitting by you right yes, now, but you've got. Yes, I do. And also in that, in, with the peacocks and chickens, you have somebody who came here unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. A little Egyptian goose, uh, mm -hmm. Lucy the goose. And she um, just flew in. She looked real happy She's this morning. She's very happy. She's got her, she has her new flight feathers. Well, and, and surrounding us now, you know, you've got these wonderful groves of clumping bamboo. Mm -hmm. And um, I can hear a lot of happy birds in those. Yes, the red-winged blackbirds, especially right now, they love that bamboo. And they, they stay for a pretty good, 
a long time actually. You like to make things in your spare time, which, <laughs> <laughs> but and you're good at it. And you use these um, alocasia, colocasia leaves. Yes, yes. And and cast them. I do. I have a table out out there we passed by, and um, I put the sand on, then the leaf on upside down, and then I mix up the concrete and I pass the concrete on, and then leave it there for a few days and then tip it, and then it makes a beautiful bird bath or whatever you want. In the bog garden, I guess, do, do um, bullfrogs and all use uh, that for habitat? Absolutely, we've got, we have so many frogs and bullfrogs and toads and everything loves that garden. But then you've even got roses. I do, I have a rose <laughs> garden. Well, right now it's a salvia garden because the salvia always takes over, but I do grow amazing roses. And of course, salvia, like many of the plants you have, is um, attractive to, to pollinators and, and yes, insects. That's why it's there. The, the bees and the hummingbirds, they, they love it. And, and butterflies, so that's why they're there. As a dairy farmer's daughter, you have to have some cows, but I think you got them a little smaller. We do. We have, we have a little miniature garden with uh, miniature houses and miniature animals and miniature cows, miniature pigs and little little paths and um, a little pond that I made out of concrete. So your students probably know that um, milk and eggs are manufactured in the back of the store. I, mean, I imagine this was part of their learning we, experience. We definitely do. When we had all the citrus trees, when, they, when, they, when the oranges were ready, I said, let's go harvesting. We'd take the ladder and the wagon, we'd fill it up, we'd come and make orange juice, whatever. And with, the, with our lemon, we're gonna make a lemon pie. Whatever, whatever was blooming, we'd go do it. You do have some beautiful citrus. What are some of the things that you're growing back there? We have some calamondins uh -huh. and um, kumquats, and then we have a, a few orange trees. And um, then we have that lemon that you love, that ponderosa lemon, it's and enormous, yeah. It has to have its own little table to hold it yeah, up. Yeah, I've, I've actually had it break the branches before because they're so large and heavy. And then you've got a swing tree. We have a swinging tree with <laughs> several swings on it and there's nothing more beautiful than seeing a group of children swinging in the tree. And then um, I was getting a little tired and needed a place to sit down <laughs> and I found some friends who looked like they had um, been tired a long time ago. They did. It's Jack and Jill, the skeletons, and they, um, they're they waiting for people to come by and their sign says, we've been waiting a long time. <laughs> um, one of my favorite native plants is sparkleberry, mm -hmm. vaccinium, and you have sparkleberry lane, and it's even more sparkly than normal. Yes, we have danglers that, <laughs> that we got out of an ad in the newspaper, and we, we hung all the danglers, and the children love it. And then we... Um, kind of end up our wonderful walk through the garden with um, a festival, coming back to the house. Well, those magazines, I saw a Mardi Gras tree <laughs> in the magazine, so I said, we've got to have a Mardi, Mardi Gras tree. So we, um, w I chose the tree and then we got a ton of beads and the chill, everybody that's been here has thrown some beads into the tree. Oh. And it's great fun. Um, and then we're so, now we're back at what had been the playground for the children. Yep. And I imagine that in the coming years, since the children will be coming back to visit, of course. They always come back and visit. But this is now another space, and I imagine that things will start happening here. I'm ready. <laughs> well, Linda Peters, um, what a wonderful opportunity and head start to life you gave children. And to have children who are going to remember this joyful experience of nature, and I bet you've made an contribution to the environmental leaders of the future. I actually know I have. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. A lot of them. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.